And let's return to today's passing of a bill that seeks to give local authorities oversight over critical computer systems that are at risk of cyber attacks, even if they're located overseas. Now, to help put this whole thing into perspective, I'm joined in the studio by Ken So. He's chair of SG Tech's cybersecurity chapter. He's also founding CEO of Athena Dynamics. Mr. So, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, so first off, uh, I just want to make reference to the story about that law firm recently sure. that we know paid a ransom of about $1.89 million, and that was uh, mm. after being hit by a cyber attack. Sure. How would this <clears throat> new bill help to prevent such a situation from occurring, if at all? Right. I would tend to see this from a macro perspective. Um, at the national level, if the baseline, the hygiene factor is strengthened, certainly there will be protection in a way. However, uh, we got to bear in mind that there's a law firm per se, it's not CII. So it still boils down to its own governance and its own hygiene factor that they have to take, take care of. Yeah. Right, I was about to say, I mean, the, uh, the average sure. person might not think a law firm, uh, specifically the business that it does, especially a private law firm, right. uh, that it is right. part of the nation's critical information infrastructure. So does that mm. mean to say all businesses like law firms or any other, other type of company, uh, as an example, are not sort of covered by this bill? Well, the effect can be very indirect because they also use a CII services. Uh, as you can see, uh, the CII uh, bill, uh, it looks like looking at the supply side of thing, but we have supply and buyer, right? So if you look at this whole ecosystem, it is a mesh of supplier and buyer, but supplier are also buyer. Mm. So in a way, the bill will help to strengthen the collective cyber posture or the landscape. But if you look at individual ones, like what you mentioned, I think a lot will still fall into their own hygiene uh, factors that they take care of whether people process technologies. And then this blend into the baseline that the bill would exist, will ex uh, assist in the strengthening of the baseline. Uh, I think that is the right approach, actually, in my view. So yeah. effectively, what I hear you say is that this amendment empowers the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore uh, to basically strengthen its what it can do along that supply, ch uh, supply chain. Right, right. You, okay. you, it will certain help, certainly help because uh, the CII has also outsourced entity. And in the past, uh, it wasn't. Most of the CII are actually on-premise. So this, this bill actually helps a lot to cover and widen the governance. Right. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the functions of Singapore's cybersecurity watchdog as well, sure. because uh, this means changes for them too. Okay. Uh, do you think that, um, especially if you're, you're talking about uh, overseas actors as well, I mean, it, right. it, it relates to that. So how does the work of CSA get impacted? Yes, I, I think if you look at uh, the past, the bill was based on a very traditional uh, protection of uh, provider of essential services, PES, and PES was a CI owner. So now with new technologies and new mode of working, they, they are actually outsourced to external CI owners and CI owners can be cross-border. It can be in Singapore, yeah. it can be outside of Singapore. Yes, yeah, so you can with have this, those data centers overseas. Exactly. Mm. Anywhere in the world, right? It's right. not location dependent anyway. So uh, in a way, I think the bill will help to strengthen that bit where the qualification of external entity, especially beyond the shore of Singapore, would actually be taken care of in a way. Of course, it will not be overnight. Yeah. I think the fine-tuning of the framework will, will be there. Yeah, it's yeah. hard enough to control what happens you know, here in, in your own jurisdiction, let alone exactly. if it's happening in another jurisdiction. Yes. Are you confident that that, that can happen, that it... That you know, CSA will be able, their powers will be fortified to okay. actually go after overseas actors? Well, I, I think it's not that straightforward. However, the pre-qualification portion will come in. That means uh, the, the onus is still on the PES, where the PES, when they choose the external partner, uh, they would have to comply to a certain framework. I, I believe there will be a, a burn-in period whereby progression will be made. Um, it, it will not be overnight. 
So I think once this is crafted and fine-tuned to the right level, so the more qualified and actually the key player of overseas player yes. yeah, will, will come into the picture and that will help in my view. Yeah, we're right at that point now when it comes to AI and so on right. and cloud computing where we're, we're thinking about the, reg the regulatory frameworks that, that okay. are needed. Uh, Mr. So, can you just you know, spell out for us in one, in, briefly in a final question, what more we really could be doing in order to strengthen those frameworks? Yes, I, I think the, the advances in technology is, is, is a good thing, but it's a, at the other end of the sword is a, a risky as well. You have AI, AI is only one of the advances. You have quantum computing coming, you have super high speed uh, network coming. And if you blend this together, uh, it's not going to be a simple issue. So a lot of uh, PPP will be important, uh, public, private, partnership, the partnerships, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think the industry consultation that CSA is doing is a well manifestation of this. And that is uh, very key because technology is advancing all the time. I think the act would have been amend, uh, need to be amended as we progress. Right, so it, it might take on a sort of an evolutionary type nature. Exactly. Mr. So, thank you very much for coming into the studios. Thank you. Uh, to talk to me about this, uh, that was Ken So there. Chair of SG Tech's Cybersecurity Chapter and also founding CEO of Athena Dynamics.